This is the 11 inch iPad Pro, the smaller version of Apple's latest and greatest flagship. And as I mentioned in a recent collab with SuperSaf, my favorite non-smartphone gadget of 2018. I know many of you judge this product based on how pro it is and the fact that it truly can replace your computer. All valid arguments, but seriously, for me, it's not about trying to replace anything. It's more about the fact that there are certain things that you can do on this that you can't do on a traditional computer. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let me explain to you what in our full review. the best way to start this video is to reiterate the most important fact about any tablet or smartwatch. You do not need one. Yes, it is true there are certain tasks that tablets just can't do and you'll have to fall back to a regular computer. But notice, uh, that's actually the case for some of you. If you've got specialized PC applications in your workflow or if you're into heavy video editing like I am, then true, an iPad is simply not good enough. Now, a very interesting trend has been happening lately, and it's the fact that I've noticed that a lot of you actually don't need a full computer either. People like my sister don't even own a computer. Everything she needs to do, she's able to do from her phone. There are people that are just on social media, that are just doing email, where even an iPad Pro like this one is overkill. Now, my use of tablets is actually unique. I rely on tablets for 100% of my video process. So let me begin this video by telling you what's great about the iPad Pro. For starters, I script 100% of my videos on a tablet. You all may hate iOS for its lack of a true window-based UI, but this is actually what I like the most. See, when I'm scripting, I prefer to avoid distractions and interruptions in order to remain inspired, and a single app on a full screen is actually ideal in mimicking the old typewriter user interface. Second, I hate battery and anxiety. For me, it's actually a waste to use 30% of my battery just to create a script while I'm on the go, which I always am, you guys know that. So for me, an iPad is actually really convenient because of the third point as well, which is the fact that you can't really use a pro computer as a notepad, where the size of this iPad Pro actually makes it rather convenient for me to use this tablet as my shot list where I can highlight everything as I'm filming. This actually helps me ensure that every clip that I need will be filmed using the Apple Pencil as a highlighter. And then the second element about being a notepad is that if it's gonna complement my MacBook Pro, it has to be thin and light. At nearly one pound, the 11 inch iPad Pro was my choice because it seriously does look and feel like a notepad. The aluminum finish at the back along with the design in the borders is quite sleek. Using this tablet without any sort of case makes it feel so light to hold with one hand. And the fact that the Apple Pencil now connects magnetically to the side makes the form factor even more convenient. And then there's content consumption. I've seriously stopped traveling with portable speakers. The speakers on this tablet are insane. Great depth, and it doesn't matter how hard you tax them, they are loud and they never distort. Certification Android flagship users are accustomed. And then there's this screen, which I actually praise for its color reproduction, contrast, brightness and direct sunlight, and this 120 Hz ProMotion is seriously awesome. And then last but not least, the specifications are killer. We're talking about an A12X Bionic, RAM that depends on your storage option, which is four gigabytes for those of you going for 64 to 512 gigs, or six gigabytes of RAM if you choose one terabyte as an option. We also have a 29 watt hour battery, and to our surprise, it even includes a fast charger through USB-C in the box, if you could call this a fast charger. But then the topic of USB-C is where I'll transition to the things I'm mixed about when it comes to this iPad Pro, as there's actually no female USB-C to lightning adapter, so I'm stuck with a ton of accessories that are made for iPad and iPhone that don't work on this tablet anymore. Like for example, my microphone, which pretty much enabled the Pocket Out daily, I'm now using an iPhone as the host for this microphone because this tablet is no longer useful for that. And then there's the fact that even if you do have a broader support for peripherals, external drives don't work. This is seriously a good move, but with a bad implementation, which leads me to the reason why the implementation is bad. The bottleneck that is iOS. 
I mean, sure, it's got the best tablet applications and the most complete ecosystem, but the reluctance of Apple to better its file system makes sharing files with this tablet a huge nightmare. And then the whole desktop experience is both inexistent and just inefficient. I think it's time for Apple to wake up to the fact that the only way that consumers will take this tablet as a pro device is when it moves away from iOS. There is a need for an iPad OS. I'm not saying that Mac OS is the best solution for this. I'm saying that we need something else, something in the middle that will allow consumers to be able to do more pro tasks with it, as definitely iOS just makes this feel like a bloated iPhone. And finally, even if I like that Face ID is now included, it is super fast, but I end up covering it half the time whenever I'm using this tablet in landscape mode. And then there are the things that just flat out do not make sense about using an iPad for the day to day. The things that I don't like, like for example, the fact that there are applications that are still not optimized for this tablet, like for example, Gmail. I rely on it heavily, but I can't really use it in multi-window, which is one of the major selling points of the previous version of iOS. Meaning, I think that Apple should actually force developers to optimize their applications for them to be supported by new tablets or simply not be available. Because honestly, it just makes the experience cumbersome every now and then. There are apps that do work, there are apps that don't. And this inconsistency is truly annoying. And then there's the fact that even if Apple brags that there is no PC as powerful as the iPad Pro, we get a mobile browser and not a desktop one, making even the cheapest and most underpowered Chromebook look far better for certain web tasks. And second, cue in this keyboard cover, which actually looks really dirty. It doesn't age well. But probably the most important reason why I chose this keyboard cover is because if I chose the regular cover, it would also provide a flap for the full back of the iPad and it would just add extra bulk that was like, you know, for the price difference, I'd rather have functionality with the keyboard. All that was great, but then the implementation of this keyboard is actually not great at all. For example, it's not backlit for its price, and using it in tablet mode means that there are keys that get in the way even if they remain off. So it's just not good design for its price, even if the typing experience is good. And then for me, probably the worst thing is the fact that you're buying this tablet because it's thin and light, and this makes it thicker than a Mac. Just like seriously, it doesn't make sense. Third, and to continue with design choices that don't make sense, what's up with this camera hump? I don't need a professional camera on an iPad, nor do I want my notepad to wobble on a table as I use it, which only forces me to buy one of those hefty covers. And then last but not least, the price tag. I mean, this Apple Pencil 2 plus the iPad and 256 gigs that I bought, plus the cover which I have here, all this combination is $1,200, the entry level price for a lot of MacBooks. That is a lot of money for a tablet. And uh, sure, there is a less expensive option, but 64 gigabytes on a tablet just does not make sense. It does make you question if you wanna buy this or a MacBook Air. To conclude, let me return to my initial premise of this product. You don't need an iPad Pro or any tablet for that matter. Heck, for most of the typical scenarios where a tablet is convenient, this iPad Pro is seriously overkill. Just buy the 9.7 inch iPad for less than $400 and you should be fine. And I do understand that Apple calls this the iPad Pro, but I feel that the name is deceiving. It is Pro, but not for productivity per se. You can do a ton of things like Excel sheets on this thing, but it's not necessarily that kind of a Pro product. This is a pro for designers, cartoonists that rely on professional work with the Apple Pencil, and I've even heard of music creators that rely only on iPads to get their work done. I'd even say that unless you're really hooked into Final Cut Pro like I am, apps like LumaFusion will provide multi-layer video editing for a good price. For me, the iPad Pro is seriously just a very convenient product. It's a way for me not to need to use my MacBook Pro. I'm shocked at how much I rely on using this iPad for just about everything else. Do I recommend this iPad Pro? Well, I love it, so sure, I can recommend it. I just, again, feel that this product is overkill. Most of you won't need it, and it just really needs an iPad OS. That is the only way that pro people are gonna consider this to be a pro tablet. Is it good? Yes, it is. Is it overpriced? Yes, it is. Is it great and cool? 
for me, it definitely is. Folks, just like this, we've got more reviews in the pipeline, so make sure you follow us on social media and subscribe to both our channels, English and Spanish, for more videos like this one. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.